Hello lovely people, my name is Fiona Boy, I'm from St Albans Pottery and today I'm going to show you how to make tea mugs, coffee mugs. Cheers! So what do we need? We need a ball of clay, we need a pointy stick, we need a paintbrush, we also need a template. So either you can get the template on my website and that will give you a flared cup you can just cut out a large rectangle. What you need to make sure is that you've got a circle to go round it. Like that. You will also need a roller and some guides. These guides are three mils thick, which is what you will want for the sides and bottom of your mug. The other useful thing is a mat. Because you're rolling out clay, it's really useful to have um, the mat to be able to bend and move with you. So to start off the rolling, you want to start off with quite a big piece and in an approximate shape of what it is that you're trying to get. So instead of having a round um, hamburger shape, I've got a bit of a long hamburger shape to start the rolling. This here, by the way, is um, 500 grams. If you remember, we're trying to get this. Guides down and that. So we're rolling. You do actually want to keep turning it over to get the length. You need to sometimes go sideways to get the depth. And when you want to turn things over, you're picking it up with your hand and placing it down gently. It's big enough now, and so I can cut around it. So we're now gonna cut it out with a pointy stick. At the top and the bottom, you want to go straight down. At the sides, you want to go at an angle because this side and this side are going to fold over each other and you're going to make a join. We're going straight down. And then this side, I'm going at an angle like this. And at this side, I'm doing an angle like this. I can then take off these extra bits, squish them together and they will make the uh, base of the cup and possibly the handle. And while I'm not using them, I'm going to keep them aside in a damp towel or in a plastic bag. So here you can see it's all cut out. And on this side, I've got it nicely beveled. And on this side, it's also nicely beveled. Doesn't matter if it's rough like that, um, that will come out in the smoothening out. Now that you've done it, you do need to roll your finger just along the edges to smoothen off those very sharp things. That's particularly with some water, particularly important the top and the bottom. Now roll out the bottom. Uh, I find that, yes, although I've got the template, I have managed to find a cutter the same size, and I find that much easier than going around that. It also gives nice clean edges. So now you've got it, burger shape, rolling pin, and the two guides. And you're going to roll one way, you're gonna pick it up, Turn it 90 degrees and roll it the other way. Also, if like me, you're rolling on fabric, you're gonna pick up this delicious texture from the, from the fabric onto the um, clay. I'm going to cut as close to the edge as possible. Um, and that way I will then have be able to recycle the clay more easily. Pointy stick. And that way I can cut that off. Pull out ta -da, that and then I'm going to place it down very gently. I might just use the back of my paintbrush and very gently prise it out all the way around and that way it's going to keep its nice round shape. Right, that can sit aside to dry. The rest of it I'm going to wrap back up again, okay, squidging it very carefully not to get air bubbles and I could use that also then for the handle. Right, so the next part is to press in those patterns. I've got some lovely cow parsley here. You might want to get any other nice, interesting shapes. What you might find is that the clay is still quite wet from rolling out. If that's the case, set it aside half an hour. And if not, you can assemble in the patterns that you want. And what you can do is press it in very gently. With your, with your roller. 
Let's also get a little pattern for the bottom. I rather like the little stars that come from that. Gonna pull these little boys off. Now you can set that aside for it to dry, maybe a few hours. Right, so now that you've brought it back in from outside or you've left it a little while, it's now ready to assemble. What you want is that it's firm enough to pick up without damaging it, but what you don't want that it's too dry and it won't actually fold and bend. If it is too dry and it is starting to crack, at this stage, lie it flat, put some more water on and try and get it a bit more pliable. So what I'm going to do is I am going to start with the base. I'm going to cross hatch. I'm going to make little marks all the way around the sides. So cross hatch, I'm going to go one way and then I'm going to go the other way. And that's with your trusty pointy stick. Similarly, I'm going to go round the bottom, round the inside of the one um, side, the one that you can see, and on the outside seam. Um, and then you can wet them and then we'll press them together. Okay. So one way, that's the other way. Similarly, one way, the other way, you can see it's crossed this side. You can see really, I'm bringing it up close, you've got that, and you've got that. Turn it over, holding it very carefully. And I'm going to do the inside seam and the other way. Now you need your paintbrush, your water, and you're going to wet all those patterns on the other side. I think that's going to be the outside. And the bottom. Be careful when you dab it, you dab the water on and you don't smooth it out. You want all those grooves because that is going to be where the traction happens between the different clays. It's not looking quite luscious enough, so I'm going to just do another little. You want a very good join here because you don't want to have your hot tea pouring out the bottom. So for joining it, I'm going to pick it up very gently. I'm going to curl it. So I'm going to push it very carefully from the front and the back. So you can see I am pushing it from the front and the back and making that join as tight as possible. To see, show you like that. You can see that I am pushing, pushing, pushing. And you can see that one is the outside and that one is the inside. So this is a very firm join. My fingers are pushing very tight on the bottom. Caution, make sure where you have done these pieces here that they are not splitting because again, your tea will run out. You may find that there's a slight overlap and you might want to do a bit more of your hashtags a bit more rigorously. So I've got it on this lovely lazy Susan. More to help film so I can slip it back from one side to another. They're quite useful, but really it's not going to stop you if you don't have one. So I'm just going back and making that join nice and wet, nice and... see? And this clay is slightly too dry because I foolishly left it in the sun. So while I'm going up the seam, okay, I am pushing it quite firmly, but I'm pushing it against my hand on the inside. So you can see as I'm going up, I have actually pushed that and squeezed that. And again, as I'm tightening it again, I'm pushing against my hand. I'm really wedging together, merging together that clay so that they can once again be friends. And move this little guy. So to tidy it up, 
Test. I've got here a lollipop stick, but again, you could use the other end of your pointy stick. And so you can see that from the outside, that is all nice and clear. So now with lollipop stick, or the back end, and I am pushing it through, pushing it through. Can also put your hand on the inside and your hand on the outside, but then you can't see what I'm doing. So that is all nice and firm, like that. Another way just to get that clay a little bit firmer is to put it down like that on the ridge where the join is and then smoothing it through with your fingers. And you're getting that nice and secure. You're also then picking up the pattern and that then is making the join nice and seamless. All right, so the next part to look at is the bottom. So now that it's all being pushed very carefully through around the edges, I now want to make sure that that seam is beautifully done. So I'm gonna push it in from there and I'm also gonna run around those edges. So I'm giving it a bit of a squeeze a little bit of water in those edges to make sure that it is totally, totally, totally sealed. And there's no ways, I'm even gonna run my finger through it like that, so that there are no little cracks, crevices, or anything that could open up in the kiln. Right, so the next thing to firm up is the edge. If you have a look at the edge, it's all a bit mucky and not very good to drink from. The best thing for this, is a bit of chamois leather, um, a big piece of chamois leather, I can't put the square. And what you want to do is go around the edges and just getting this nice and smooth and pleasant to drink from. Now you'll notice there is a little bump here and that's where the two edges have come together. So I am just going to smoothen it off with something sharp. Now the current cup might look rather large, but because clay shrinks between 10 and 15%, that size will become that size. They came from the same template. So the next thing you want to do is get to the base of the inside of the cup where the wall meets the base. That corner there is a point of weakness. And so what you want to do is get in there with some clay and um, join those walls together. What we need, clay. You want to roll yourself a few sausages. They don't need to be very thick. Well, you see I'm rolling it like that. My fingers are spread quite wide. I'm not using the base of my hand. I'm just using the fingers. That way it doesn't dry out too much. And I'm going quite lightly and I keep rolling up and down. That kind of thickness. So with the pointy stick, we're going to go all the way around the inside and, and score at the base, both on the walls and the bottom, just around the corner where that point meets. You're going to score the one way and then we're going to go back and score the other way, the hashtags. We're gonna get our coils, we're gonna dip them in water, and then we're gonna pop them inside. Not too long, if they're too long, they tend to stick on the sides or the bottom. The shorter, they're actually more manageable. Dip, 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 and then we pop them in. Then you can rub them over with your finger till they're nice and smooth. If you need to get the end of your paintbrush to reach, you could also use that. Right, so the last thing to do before we do handles is just to make sure that you're happy with all the patterns. So perhaps where the join is gone, you might want to go back over and redo the patterns. You might want to add a few little more squiggles and bits and pieces. One part of this might just be straightening up the sides so that it's not bowed till you can get a nice straight cup. So to finish off, we need to make handles. I have made a few little carrots, basically. I've rolled them, I've compacted them, and I now have this kind of shape. Water, and we're going to milk the cow. So I've never actually milked a cow, but this is the official way for pulling handles. And potters all over the world make handles this way. You see, I am pulling it down. I'm holding it at the top. I'm using this part of my hand, the pot's got dirty, and I am squishing it down. I'm turning it round and I'm pulling it down. And each time, I am wetting it. 
if I show it to you like that. And what this is doing is it is aligning the clay particles into a nice, strong shape. So each time you're actually squeezing it, making it longer and longer, you're compressing it. I find I like to make more handles than I need, so I've got some to choose from, because handles are a little bit finickety. So you can see here, I've got a nice length, probably about a little bit longer. Now, I need to clip the bottom and I'm going to clip it with my fingers, like that. This little lump can go to the side. And I've got this and I'm now going to just leave it into a circle and I'm going to put it on a wooden board on newspaper to firm up. So now we're going to attach the handles. The, what we're going to need is a cookie cutter. This is now firmed up beautifully. And even these, if you let them go, they are still quite firm. Okay, so we're going to choose a good one. Yep, that's quite a good one. Now if you have a little look, it's quite a bit thicker up here. It's quite nice and thin down there. And it's got a lovely curve on it. So I'm going to just, with my thumb, smooth that out. You can see I'm just smoothing it to get it a little more even. It will also lengthen it a little. Okay. Now you want to look onto your mug. Where's the best place to put it? Quite often it's the seam where it joins um, so that you can work with it there. So, yep, yeah, that's probably a good spot for it. I'm using my pastry cutter. And what I need to do on here is with my pointy stick, do a very nice cross hatching. And on here, do a very nice cross hatching. And if you look down the bottom, you can also find a nice good spot. And do the cross hatching there. So if you have a look, I have cross hatched and I'm all set here. I need my stick, a bit of water, a bit of water, and a bit of water. So I get this and I like to put it seamlessly on the top. Okay, I'm actually holding it on very nicely, squishing it quite tight with my fingers. Okay, so I'm getting that. And then where I go down, I get a good shape. And I can see where it is. I pick it up. I do some good scoring. A bit of water into those grooves. And that eyeballing it, making sure it's nice and straight straight from the top, straight from the bottom, straight from the side. I put my hand inside and then I push it down on two sides. So you can see I've pushed it onto the one side and I'm pushing it onto the other side. That's actually called a fishtail, the way that's been done. And my top is now balancing quite precariously. So it looks good. What I need to do now is firm it up. So I need some more clay. The little bit that I've taken away is a good start. And what I really like to do is get quite a sharp pointy stick. And where these two things join is that crack. I like to go in with the crack. and really make the most of it. And underneath as well, I go in with that crack. You can see I've made a good light there. Okay, and on the inside, I've done a similar thing. I get my clay sausage, I pop it over, and I let it go down the edge. So I'm doing that 
what I've got over there. And I wrap it round. And I pop it underneath. So you can see I have popped it underneath. And then I get the back of my paintbrush and I squidge it in place. So again, where you've got your two right angles, you've got a nice sausage of clay in there, really gripping it and making it firm. Similarly on top, I use that and my fingers. And what I like to do is to get this handle growing out of the rim. You don't want to stick up any higher because if someone is actually washing it and they've got it upside down on the washing thing, you don't want it to rock. You want that to be flatter. Do you see where I've got that? That's looking good. Excellent. And you can just pull off the excess worms and get them all nice and tidy. And then what I do like to do is in these two corners, I like to just get two balls of clay, similar size. I roll them up. I stick them in those little spots, those weak spots. And I get the inside of my pen. This one's got no, no ink in it. And I just go and do a, a little squish in there so it is all nicely captured, all right? And then I do a similar thing down the bottom. Again, I get another sausage. I use my sharp pointy stick and I go in there between that crack and I create um, some lines there. And then I get my worm, I dip it in the water and I pop it in there. And you can see me pulling it down. Again, getting the back of my paintbrush, and you say, yep. And supporting it on the one side, I am just pushing it in place. And then I'll get some water, and I will just make sure that there's no knocks twists and dings and I'll get it nice and smooth put it upside down and again what I do is I just give it a little push so what you've got then is a very strong shape which is brilliant for holding and drinking out of right let's put the kettle on and go and get started happy making <laughs> 